Good afternoon, everybody. Um, my name is Brett Mackerson. I'm uh, General Manager for Elsom Engineering. Um, I'll jump straight into it. Uh, we're asked to talk today just briefly about our ThingWorks journey uh, so far and, and on IoT. Um, for uh, industry on the ground, I guess, uh, in, in some ways it's early days, in some ways uh, things have uh, already developed uh, quite quickly. Um, so uh, I've been in uh, industry for about 20 years. Uh, Elsom Engineering is a metal engineering and manufacturing company. Uh, we're based out of uh, Melbourne's eastern suburbs. Um, our history dates back over 40 years. Um, so we've seen, I guess, in that time, a lot of generations of tech, um, a lot of tools, um, a lot of software, a lot of changes in CAD, um, in modeling, in processes, all sorts of different things. Um, and uh, it never stops. Uh, you know, there's always something new. Um, so our core business uh, stems from the uh, uh, Australian heavy vehicle and, and trucking industry. Um, we supply thousands of parts for uh, OE and aftermarket. Um, we have four plants located on site uh, with approximately 60 plus staff. Um, and we have a strong mandate for reinvestment, vertical integration, um, and continual improvement. Um, without it, you're out of business real quick. So I guess um, uh, Alan and the team asked us to talk a little bit about our ThingWorks journey uh, so far. Um, 2017, not so long ago, um, saw Elsom uh, commence its IoT journey. Um, 2018, um, we partnered with uh, Leap, Stride, PTC, um, and the ThingWorks platform. Um, let me dispel any myths. Um, IoT is not some distant future tech. It's here right now. Um, our plant's out in Melbourne. Um, I left the plant to come here uh, for a quick bite to eat. Uh, we're running ThingWorks when I left. I expect ThingWorks to be running when I get back and uh, starting to give us all sorts of good data. It's happening now. Um, so I guess uh, uh, without uh, in too much of a daggy reference, you'll have to forgive me. Um, if you look back at that, the history has actually been there for, for quite some time. Um, IoT, I think the first IoT controlled device was a Sunbeam Dulux toaster, of all things. You can go look that up. Um, internet enabled and controlled. We're not in the toasting business, so probably no help to us today. Um, the inventor, John Remke, showcased it uh, in a center stage performance um, in 1989. So the concept has been around almost as long as, you can see the second part of my notes there, um, World Wide Web was proposed less than 12 months prior. Tim Bernard Lee, I think it was. Um, so IoT as a concept is, is not new. Um, realizing it in an easy way that's easy to adopt and cost effective for business and industry is new. So I guess where we sort of sit and, and, and our angle on, on things, I guess, you know, the ongoing march of globalization, everyone talks about that and how it brings challenges for all businesses um, and industry. Um, there's been a lot of doom and gloom um, across many aspects of business and industry, certainly uh, post GFC, that's for sure. Um, we see all of that, we're involved in that, knee deep in the trenches, so to speak, every day. Um, in Australian manufacturing, we must do more with less volume. We must have higher service levels of customization and options. Um, we must serve a shorter lead times. We must maintain world's best quality or reach it if you haven't got there yet. Um, and ultimately, we have to offer our customers better value. So um, there's obviously also been lots of big discussions um, in the papers. Um, uh, and around the world um, for how we break the stagnation of productivity. Um, an industry 4.0 mindset um, in all its different flavors, you know, there's lots of different flavors of industry 4.0. You know, you only have to go back a couple of years ago, I think, and they were touting that, you know, industry 4.0 was just a great marketing tool for the Germans out of Europe, depending on what continent, uh, continent you're on. Um, but IoT is one of those key pillars. Um, and it, it offers us and companies like Elsom a way forward right now. So
So um, the modern industrial environment, it looks different for uh, different organizations. Um, for us, um, IoT is a real equalizer on the world stage. Um, I've just taken a, a, a quick snapshot um, just to, to illustrate a, a concept. So we might look at, for example, uh, our production floor operations. We might have a 10 ton press. We might have a five access mill. We might have handheld fastener guns. Um, we might have fiber optic laser cutters. You know, we might have, uh, you know, our old Nally stamping machine from, you know, 1942, back when men were men. Um, we might have our TIG welding cell. We might have uh, our powder coat facility. Uh, and overarching all of that, we've got our ERP system. We run live shop floor tracking and a whole bunch of stuff. Yep, well, a lot of this has been done now. So what does that mean? Well, for Alsom, um, it means many things don't talk to each other. Many things talk different languages. Many things are perfectly good from an investment perspective. They do a great job. But they're generations older, different technologies, different uh, materials, different properties. Many things behave differently. Some examples that Alan touched on uh, just, just briefly then, you might have uh, you know, your wind chill system working in with a bill of material or, or purchasing department. Now, for those of you that work in a business that have all those different aspects in it, a lot of those departments don't talk very well generally. Maybe the, the email is the interface. Um, beyond that, though, what's, what's happening in the plant? And following this logical mindset, these are the journey that we've been on. What's happening in the business? So for a company like Alsom that supports vertical integration, uh, the environment and the interactions in that environment can become quite complex. Um, certainly for us. Um, and then like anything, our, our business runs in real time. All the demands and inputs in a given hour, there's probably thousands of them across the business. More. Pay attention because uh, all my demands will change. And then tomorrow it'll all be different. So what we, we've started on our journey, there are so many layers and depths into the ThingWorks and IoT platform. Um, it's, it's, I won't say infinite, um, but um, it's as, as what we can be. It's as good as we can imagine it. If we're smarter and we work better with things, it'll present the next level of how we interact with our business. Um, I think without wanting to quote someone like Bill Gates, but I think he actually wrote a book back in the early 90s called business at the speed of thought, and um, which I think was a while ago now, and I, I remember reading that um, in an earlier iteration of my life and getting all excited about it, but wondering how the heck that was going to happen. Well, something like that as a concept now is reality. It's, it's what we can design in our brains and the interactions. So what we're focused on now, which is obviously what we're asked to talk about, is um, connecting and integrating IoT sensors. So you can see there now, um, we can digitize things that we might not have been able to digitize before. It almost creates a universal level blanket across the business. And that's exciting stuff. It is for me anyway. I think this is great stuff. Um, so by connecting and integrating IoT sensors and ThingWorks, we can start to make thing, uh, sense of things in great detail. So. Some of those red bullet points I had before, well, the, the language changes. I can talk to others. I'm starting to talk and communicate for the first time. We're talking the same language. Funnily enough, a bit like the internet, really. Started out in early days, and there, now we're all talking the same language over the internet. I can do different things, but I can interact with others. I can know what is happening in a work cell in the plant. How does that affect me? Doesn't matter if I'm a manager, if I'm a line supervisor, if I'm a machine. Alan gave an example before about taking inputs from a machine and feeding them back into the machine so it changes its behavior. Amazing stuff. How can I improve? And this is where our journey comes in. We're talking in real time. So for Alsom, 
we can start to make sense of things and move forward. This is an environment that we can now work with. This is an environment that we can support diversity and complexity, but communicate well. And to pick up on, um, again, sorry, Alan, I'm picking on you here, but to pick up on Alan's example before with the flow process through ThingWorks, not only can we communicate well, we can communicate easily, less effort. So this is an environment that talks to us in real time. This is an environment in which we can apply powerful tools such as Six Sigma, value stream mapping, theory of constraints, easily. Um, this is an environment that allows us further pursuit of continual improvement. This is an environment that can adapt, aspire, and, and achieve. That's all I've got to touch on today. Um, I know we only had a couple of minutes. Um, all right. Well, thanks, everybody. Cheers.